Today we're talking about cruel summer. I finished the show last night. I'm very excited to talk about it with you guys because it's like pretty little liars in a lot of ways. There are a lot of similarities and I kind of grew my channel a lot talking about Pretty Little Liars and it's something I'm really passionate about. So I was looking for a show that could kind of recapture the vibes that Pretty Little Liars gave me and Cruel Summer's kind of similar. That's why some of you guys were recommending it to me. So today we're going to break down the characters, the rivalry between Kate and Jeanette, the storylines and the ending. So let's get into it and let's just set the scene a little bit. So Cruel Summer is a show set in the 90s, 1993, 1994 and 1995 and the show jumps between those three time periods so you have that feeling of oh how did we get from A to B and you have to piece it together because it's not in chronological order. The series follows what happens after the popular Kate Wallace goes missing and then when she returns she names Jeanette as a prime suspect and Jeanette was someone who was a pretty nervous dorky girl but after Kate went missing she essentially took over Kate's life. The series rotates between each girl's perspective so there's like an episode on each girl so you have this feeling that there's a feud between them or you need to choose who to trust or maybe neither of them are trustworthy. The showrunner Tia said we looked to women in the 90s who kind of got skewered in the media. With Cruel Summer we get to live with these actual human beings and learn that the reality is much more of a grey area than just a black and white hero villain story. That's pretty cool and you do get that vibe with the show that maybe every Everyone's got something to hide and it's not as simple as a villain and a good guy. But with the show's timeline, I have to say I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I think I would have preferred to see the show just happen in chronological order so I could gradually see things decline and be taken by surprise by how people were evolving rather than enjoying it and being immersed in it. I don't like that every two seconds I have to stop and be like, wait, which timeline are we in and try and figure it out before I can keep watching because then I end up having to rewind because I, I miss stuff. But maybe it's a good thing they didn't do it in chronological order because if it was, we would have had two whole episodes of just Jeanette in 1995 being moody and negative and she was such like a pain in the ass to watch on the screen. So annoying. I'm not sure I could have stomached it just with her kind of negative attitude. I know she was having a hard time but like oh something about her just infuriates me in 1995. To show the different time periods you have the characters attitudes and you have their costumes but also the lighting. In 1993 when everything's a bit happier the lighting has this bright orange tint to it but it gets progressively darker as the show goes but I really detested the lighting in 1995 because it was this very dark really unattractive bluish grayish color palette that was really gross to look at and also to show a memory or a flashback to something in the past. Normally then in the past the lighting is dark. In movies and TV shows I just noticed that trend so it's really confusing that we're in the present day but yet it's really dark. I find that strange. But aside from that let's actually talk about the characters. So I want to start with probably the most important character in the show which is Jeanette. God, I don't get the hype around this girl. People saying that because she was nerdy and a bit awkward, therefore they felt like they connected to her because I didn't feel like I connected to her at all. She was definitely sweeter in 1993 and I was like, oh, she's a bit more normal, but she was still by no means normal and I just couldn't find anything that we had in common or any way of thinking that she was like this sweet person who I rooted for at all. She really scared me from the day she came on screen and nothing changed. All I could see were a bunch of red flags and extremely worrying warning signs. She doesn't have much confidence in anything. She just wants to be popular and have the limelight for once but she feels like she's never going to be that kind of person and all she wishes for on her birthday is to be popular. So I did feel bad for her in the sense that she's clearly quite damaged and doesn't think much of herself but she gets the key to my 
Martin Harris's house and it was just for a dare and stuff but she keeps going back there when she doesn't need to maybe to feel some sense of power because it's clear she enjoys doing risk taking things and dares but I found that extremely creepy and that's one of many warning signs that show that this girl is just a bit of a weirdo like the fact that she kept again coming back into his house at one point took something from his house the snow globe who does that she develops this obsession with the popular girl Kate and is always watching her and it's more than just admiring Kate or being like wow I wish I could be like her it's like she's obsessed with Kate all she can talk about is Kate and she gets all weird whenever she's near her like she doesn't know what to say and she even got Kate scrunchy and was carrying it around for ages saying I'm gonna give it back to her but it was clear she wasn't going to give it back to her and all I'm seeing are the signs that she's going to have something to do with Kate's disappearance because she's obsessed with the girl and after Kate goes missing the first thing that she does is she introduces herself to Kate's mum as a friend of Kate's and she's like I'm Kate's friend and the mum's like no you're not and Jeanette's like well I'm a new friend of Kate's okay but if you ever need anything I'm here what it was so awkward and the mum was like ew no thanks and walks away and Jeanette rather than being like oh that was embarrassing she's like what a weirdo why is she smiling and acting as if that was a normal conversation was she trying to be involved now that Kate wasn't there I don't even know but I genuinely thought the whole point of the show was to show the mind of a creepy stalker that's what I thought I was convinced I was like wow this is great it's nice to see a show told from the villains point of view which made me even more confused when I was reading through people's comments about the show and they were saying I can't believe Jeanette turned out to be a bad person I was really rooting for her we were all there for her and I'm so disappointed that she let us down as if it was a surprise I'm really trying to get why people would miss all those red flags but I can't she was even reading in bed the talented mr. Ripley which is ironic she's reading that and symbolic and if any of you haven't read it I did a whole case study on it the whole project so I know that book inside out and I thought it was so significant that that was the book she was reading and I still have loads of notes about it I'll give you the context Tom Ripley in the book is a young man struggling to make a living in New York by whatever means necessary including a series of small-time confidence scams and he meets Dickie and spends a lot of time with him he's really creepy and obsessive and possessive and then Dickie becomes upset when he finds Ripley in his room dressed up in his clothes and imitating his mannerisms and from that moment on Ripley senses that Dickie has begun to tire of him and they've lost their friendship so Ripley finally decides to murder Dickie and assume his identity so he kills him and he lives off Dickie's trust fund and he continues this lavish lifestyle that isn't actually his and his forging checks his changing his appearance to resemble Dickie and he even kills someone who ended up finding out the truth and was considering killing Dickie's girlfriend because he was worried she was going to catch on and find out the truth the book ends with him happily rich but also suggests he may forever be dogged by paranoia and always scared he'll be caught out for what he's done and the crimes he's committed and I could see so many parallels when I thought about it between him his character and Jeanette. I'll just talk about these similarities because I think it's fascinating. Tom Ripley is a pathological or compulsive liar. I don't know really the difference between those two things, but he lies about things when he needs to lie. But he also lies for really no reason. He just lies like it's oxygen to him. And funnily enough, Jeanette, I noticed, couldn't stop lying as well and digging herself into a hole. And she seemed to have a real problem with being honest with herself. Even with, I think it was the weed that Mallory had, Jeanette said, I flushed it down the toilet but she'd actually kept it to herself and things like that where you can tell she's not being honest and Tom Ripley lies about his family where he worked and where he went to school and he also had a complete failure to accept the responsibility of his own actions he'd get annoyed at other people when he was doing the wrong thing and again that's textbook Jeanette behavior they also both have an obsession over someone else Tom had this obsession with Dickie and his feelings actually stemmed kind of in a romantic way which made me wonder if Jeanette maybe had a crush on Kate. With Tom Ripley he's interesting because he's very grandiose and very entitled. He expects people to treat him in a certain way and he expects to have attention but at the same time he has extremely low self-esteem because if he doesn't get that validation he craves he goes into this spiral of negative and anxious thoughts. So he's a weird 
paradox of both and I also saw that with Jeanette. I remember I read this review about the show that said Jeanette is a tough and tricky character to figure out but there are also moments when fans think that Kate is lying and that Jeanette is a totally innocent girl who just wants to be liked. I didn't feel that way at all. I thought it was incredibly easy to figure Kate out as a victim of her circumstances and someone who maybe had her catty moments but overall wasn't that big a perpetrator. I mean it's just common sense isn't it? It's just what are the patterns you're seeing and what do they amount to? Anyway, after Kate's gone missing, they say that Kate was found and Jeanette's response was something along the lines of, oh, have they found the body? So that immediately, again, was another nail in the coffin that Jeanette knew something had happened to Kate, knew probably where she was, that she'd been kidnapped, and she was hoping that Kate would die. And I know that one time she was hanging out with Jamie when Kate disappeared and they heard this gunshot. And I was sure that Jeanette thought that the gunshot was Kate being killed and shot. So she was probably even more convinced that Kate had died. I can't believe people are really thinking they root for Jeanette when it's established from like the first episode that Jeanette basically became Kate when Kate went missing. Started dressing like her, behaving like her. She took Kate's boyfriend. She took Kate's friends. That's not normal. That's so odd. We never really saw that transition where Jeanette started moving in on Kate's friends. We just know that it just sort of happened happened and it seems like it was overnight. One minute she's lonely and the next minute she's well liked. I would have loved to see how that happened and how she managed to manipulate her way into that because that was just a big chunk that was missing that felt quite important and wasn't there. She lies non-stop Jeanette. Oh my god and she is like the master. I was noticing it straight away of manipulation and projection and playing dumb and also victimizing herself. She does it a lot where she wallows in her own self-pity. Oh, oh my life's, life's been, been really hard, hard okay. I can't do everything. everything. I, just I just need a lot, lot of attention. attention. She can't stop lying. And at the time we knew that was the case as well, that she was lying. So why are people defending someone who's a liar? If you're innocent and it's just a misunderstanding, you wouldn't be lying like this. Like you'd be honest and you'd have an explanation for stuff and you wouldn't have anything to hide. In 1995, the whole world basically hates Jeanette. And so she spends a lot of time in her house watching TV and stuff. And I do feel terrible for her in the sense that she seems really depressed and like she doesn't have a support system and she's feeling really down about herself and she said you know I have no one but I couldn't help but feel this undertone of she'd caused this somehow I just couldn't oh I couldn't put my finger on it but it's like she was trying to be like everyone's misunderstanding me and the world's against me and even my own dad doesn't like me and Wah. it was totally her fault but she's trying to play the victim wallowing in her own misery and it's so annoying you know how in every scene she's constantly doing this sort of face like hmm and she's just slouching around everywhere and she's saying in this grumpy, extremely low energy voice, oh, who cares anyway? No one cares about me anyway. I don't know. Like, it's so annoying. The lawyers say that for the media to like her more and for people in general to like her more, Jeanette needs to make herself a more relatable personality and someone who seems innocent because with the way she's behaving, she doesn't seem innocent, which was exactly what I was thinking. So I thought it was pretty good advice. Jeanette was like, oh, so you want me to be more like Kate then? Which wasn't what they said at all and then she was annoyed and she was like oh so you want me to not even be like myself as if they were giving her bad advice but I honestly thought it was good advice because Jeanette isn't very charming I never found her charming and I think she comes across as very unlikable and it occurred to me that even if Jeanette was completely innocent and hadn't done anything wrong at all she's very easy to dislike and she's not very good at selling herself so I thought she really needs to get better at that because she's putting her worst foot forward and maybe making herself look more guilty than she is. She sees this video of, of an innocent girl on trial and Jeanette's like, hmm, so that's what innocent looks like. That's what, you know, being a nice person who's been wronged looks like. She starts copying the girl's mannerisms and she's like, Kate's lying. Kate's lying. I'm innocent. I haven't done anything wrong. I've been wronged. An innocent person shouldn't need to act like that or put on a show. And it shows she's always trying to put on this facade. And It was chilling. That's not, again, normal behavior by any means. And it was also the fact that as she was putting on that face, she had this smile on her face. Like she thinks it's funny or amusing or she doesn't know how to mimic human emotions normally because the way she was doing it was really unconvincing and from that moment on I was like 
this girl is not someone to be trusted and the show if anything is making it crystal clear they're not hiding anything they're not holding it back they're laying it on a silver platter for us to see i knew it was possible that kate had lied about seeing jeanette and making eye contact with jeanette because jeanette kept saying stuff like i never saw kate we never locked eyes we never made eye contact we never saw each other but i had the feeling that maybe jeanette was using kate's story as a bit of a loophole because i was sure that jeanette could have heard kate heard her screaming for help which is different so then jeanette could feel okay with justifying her own actions because she could say well kate never i mean she never looked at me like we never made eye contact but she could hide the fact that actually maybe she'd heard kate screaming for help or maybe she'd seen kate one time being locked up and kate just hadn't noticed that jeanette had seen her and it turns out in the end i was right jeanette had hadn't seen Kate and they hadn't made eye contact. Kate had lied about that, which was really wrong. But Jeanette had heard her. She'd been going into Martin Harris's house. So of course, it's not a surprise she saw Kate there because she was going into the house constantly, obviously. I don't know why people are surprised by that. She was in the house all the time. And when she was in the house, she heard Kate screaming, saying, is someone there? It's me, Kate Wallace, I've been kidnapped. And Jeanette just stood there for a long time and she smiled and she didn't open the door to let Kate out. When Kate said she'd seen Jeanette and Jeanette had seen her, Jeanette was still happy to be like, that's not true and try and sue Kate she had the nerve to do that and she ended up then when Kate publicly apologized to her and said look I made it up I'm sorry Jeanette pulled out of suing Kate which was a little strange to me because if you were innocent obviously you wouldn't pull out of suing the person you would still sue them because for like an entire year or two Jeanette's whole reputation had been tarnished so I felt like she should at least get some money if she's innocent and Kate's dragged her name through the mud I don't know what even she wants from Kate at this point like what's her end goal what what she hoping will happen between her and Kate I have no idea then it's revealed as I think it was meant to be a plot twist at the end but there was nothing surprising about it that Jeanette had in fact heard Kate screaming for help even though she hadn't actually locked eyes with her honestly when someone shows you who they are or they tell you who they are like Jeanette had done to us so many times believe them. I didn't know exactly what would go down with Jeanette, but I knew she was someone who couldn't be trusted. And I had no doubt in my mind she was wrapped up in Kate's disappearance somehow, even if it wasn't exactly the way Kate said it was, she'd done something wrong. I didn't know why there'd even be a team Kate or team Jeanette, because I was seeing that and I was like, why is everyone acting like they're both not trustworthy? It was so obvious to me that Kate definitely had lied about things, but at the root of it, she was a victim. I didn't like that she lied about locking eyes with Jeanette but she'd been through a very traumatic experience and she had a lot of good qualities and she'd have some growing up to do like so many teenagers do with Jeanette I am hesitant to think she'll ever even grow up or mature or become a better person I have very low expectations for Jeanette and just because she keeps saying over and over again I'm innocent okay I didn't do anything wrong doesn't mean it's true now I want to talk about Jeanette's parents Greg and Cindy because obviously they may have been part of the reason why their daughter Jeanette turned out as evil as she was. So they did make mistakes with their parenting for sure. Did some things or said some things where I was like, mm, that was a big mistake. But overall, they do love their kids a lot and they did their best to look after them and love them even if they tripped up along the way. And I felt so bad for Jeanette's dad because it was like he was constantly on Jeanette's side to the point that he was in denial that she'd ever do anything wrong. He was telling her she was beautiful before and after her makeover. As for the mom, she was the one that started cluing on to the fact that something was going on with Jeanette she was the one that started questioning it that Jeanette was lying to the police but honestly I don't blame the mum I think yeah you could say it was a bit harsh or something but at the end of the day Jeanette's mum doesn't want to be wrapped up in this whole murder disappearance kidnap case she doesn't want any involvement in it and you'd freak out to think that your daughter is unrecognizable to you and it really broke my heart when she said to Jeanette's brother one day wow I'm so proud of you because it's like she realized she only had one good kid and the other one was a lost cause and it just made me so sad because I feel like Jeanette really undervalued her parents and wasn't grateful for them and didn't respect them and everything that they'd done for her because they did do a lot of good things and I also detest again another reason I could never get behind Jeanette I detested that she ruined their relationship now her parents were already rocky for sure and they definitely wouldn't have lasted but the way 
way they ended and the fights they got into and the catalyst for their breakup was Jeanette that had done that to them because she was dividing them. She was lying and gaslighting both of them saying, how could you even ask me that? Of course I'm innocent. Manipulating her own parents till they weren't even sure what to believe and they felt terrible for even questioning her. But then when the mum's like, no, Jeanette's necklace was Jeanette's necklace and she's lying and saying it's not her necklace. She's lying to the police. Oh my God, what's going on? Jeanette's saying it's not true. So as a result, the parents are in this situation where one of them is trying to get the other to see the truth about Jeanette and they're butting heads around it and so their relationship comes crashing down because of Jeanette driving this wedge in between them and I hate that Jeanette did that to them and what's even worse is rather than Jeanette feeling bad about it she blames her mum for leaving and she blames her mum for the separation even though it really wasn't her mum's fault at all and that was just another reminder that Jeanette is constantly blaming other people for her mistakes which is a really ugly quality to be honest yeah that's all i have to say about the parents now let's talk about kate who is the other most important character in the whole series and i actually really like kate because she's flawed i get why kate was confused truly because she'd looked out the window and she'd seen a bike that she thought was Jeanette's bike. It wasn't Jeanette's bike, but she really thought it was because she'd seen that bike before with Jeanette riding it. And she saw someone in a hood. That's all she's got to go on and that's not really enough. And she could have just told the police, you know, there was a girl there riding, I think it's Jeanette's bike, so I think it's Jeanette Turner. But instead she lied and out to Jeanette on TV in this interview and said that she'd locked eyes with Jeanette and I mean that's really mean because she and Jeanette barely knew each other so she was making this innocent girl go through so much slander and make the whole town hate her and her friends hate her and it might not even have been true so I really disliked that. Um, to be fair on Kate though she did apologize to Jeanette and she did say that she genuinely thought it was Jeanette and she never would have accused Jeanette if she didn't think it was her. So I guess because Kate was traumatized and angry and she saw the bike, she really thought that it was Jeanette. But it was a little bit petty, you have to admit, because she didn't like Jeanette. She didn't like that Jeanette had taken her boyfriend and her friends and she was creeped out by Jeanette, understandably. So I do believe that she was looking for a reason to get back at her. And she was like, I just wanna make someone else suffer the way I've suffered, you know? I did really dislike Kate doing it. I was extremely, extremely disappointed in her when I heard this, but I do have faith that she will grow and learn from that. I honestly adore her. I think she's great because she really reverts the stereotype of the confident, mean, manipulative, blonde, popular queen bee because that's a thing we see in the media constantly with the feminine, pretty, popular girl being kind of demonized and those feminine qualities making her unlikable and petty and shallow. But Kate actually has a lot of depth to her. She's also actually quite sweet and quite kind and I got those vibes from the beginning. People were saying bad things about Kate in the beginning, like Mallory was saying, ugh, who wants to be like Kate? You're almost as bad as Kate. But she didn't even know Kate, so I did feel that people were jealous of Kate and her seemingly perfect life and they were judging her before they even knew her because I didn't get those vibes from Kate at all and I thought she was actually pretty sweet and respectful. She doesn't seem very judgmental. She seems quite compassionate. So I wasn't seeing any real warning flags with Kate. She has a really hard home life and her mom is really emotionally abusive and even slaps Kate at one point and they can never just have a conversation because Kate is blamed for anything. Kate just wanted to have a chat with her parents around the fact that she thought her dad was cheating. She wasn't going to tell the whole town she just had the concern and her whole family was awful to her about it. Her mum was bullying her so much and making out that Kate was this liar and gaslighting her and I felt awful for Kate and she was very open about the fact that her parents doing that to her especially her mum her dad was way better but her mum was worse but her dad was more of a facilitator you know but her mum doing that was really what pushed her into this relationship with a much older man because she didn't have a support system or someone to talk to and her mom has some good moments, but she's 90% bad. Kate's like 15, 16, and she's dating this guy who wouldn't even disclose his age. He's not only a teacher, but he is also 
at least 35. I mean, he's got wrinkles forming. He's not young. He's too old for her. And I think in his own twisted way, he cared about her, but only when it served him. It was a very selfish kind of love where he would do what worked for him on his terms without considering what worked for her. And I also didn't like that he was trying to isolate her because he definitely knew what he was doing was wrong. He was very much conscious of it and he didn't care. What I love about the show is Kate verbally says the words I was groomed treating it as an actual abusive situation which I completely adore rather than making it out to be romantic and it's shown with Kate in the later years how much this relationship has emotionally damaged her how angry it's made her she's only ever dated Jamie and he's a bit of a douchebag so she doesn't have any points of comparison so she probably thought it was love actually I'll tell you I'll tell you their story briefly because I think it's so fascinating with how this relationship kind of happened he said that when he first met her he thought she was one of the adults and she's saying stuff like I am mature for my age aren't I and it's like they're both shying away from the topic of age and how inappropriate it is and at another point he gets her alcohol and then he says oh sorry don't drink that I forgot you're underage he's trying to act as if it's not that he's a predator or he's creepy it's just that he sees her as someone that's really mature and like really on top of things and really amazing which is so awesomely done because that's exactly how it is. He does that a lot where he basically says, wow, you're so wise for your years. He even calls her an old soul. I was like, these writers know what they're doing. They're brilliant. They know how this whole manipulation thing works. You're an old soul, okay? You're, you're wise beyond your years. No, she's not, but he's trying to say that. <laughs> it's so clever. What else happens? What was interesting to me is I hear a lot of stories, you know, with teachers preying on students. The girls say stuff like it got very physical, very early on. What's interesting with Mr. Harris is he would really ease his way into it and it's like he was hoping that she would make the first move so then he could feel better about it because then he could say well she touched me first. Like she reaches out and makes a physical touch first and it takes ages for them to actually kiss and stuff which I think is really interesting. It's like he wanted to build up to it and I just say this because with a lot of these creepy people sometimes it happens like straight away but he was really easing his way into it although I will say he was being extremely flirtatious like they were watching the clouds together and he was getting her to open up about her life and he was saying very flirtatious things to her and he was flirting with her but he wasn't actually physically making the first move she thinks he's so wise and he kind of gives off this impression that he can teach her he can help her with things and I just thought it was very cleverly done um, even the fact that he'd seemed so happy when she arrived at his doorstep and when they were hanging out with the alcohol which I can guarantee was not a coincidence he gave her the alcohol because like hello he wanted her to be drinking but then he said to her have you ever kissed an older guy and she said yeah Jamie and he was like oh have you ever kissed a significantly older guy he was waiting for her to kiss him and he even said something like oh it might not be the right thing to do and I realized he loves to think of himself as the good guy and he loves to make it sound like he's quite respectful but it did end up progressing into a fully fledged relationship her mum raised her to be vulnerable and needing other people needing validation and in completely obedient and as a result it, she didn't even really question well, do I like Mr. Harris? It was more that she was happy he liked her and she was trying to please him. So she said that it was the way she was raised that made her be so vulnerable that she was completely exposed to a guy like Martin and she fell for him so easily. One of the things she wasn't fully honest about, which I actually kind of understand, is that she went to his house willingly. He didn't grab her and pull her in. She went to his house. It wasn't kidnap the night she arrived. It's not like she turned up at his house and then he kidnapped her the next morning. It was like a hundred days of them living together as a couple because I did like how unexpected it was he was basically realizing that she'd gone missing for 24 hours because she'd been at his place and he realized if she just left the house what would the police say and they know she was staying with him overnight and he hadn't really considered how bad that would look because she can't lie they'll know she was staying with him and it started turning into this situation where it was one day then it was two and then two days turned into a week and suddenly she was noted as missing in the media and stuff and on the news and she was choosing him over her own family effectively he was the one that she wanted more than her own parents because she knew if I leave this is it we can never be together rather than her being kidnapped in the first 100 days it's 
them being together, she could have left the house anytime she wanted to, but it was more his emotional manipulation. But I don't really think that classifies as kidnap. He still committed a bunch of crimes, but he wasn't locking the doors at that point and he wasn't gating her in. She could have left anytime she wanted to. It's just that he was putting up these emotional barriers for her. And he only kidnapped her um, when one day she actually said, I want to leave because she was being very selfish. Her whole family was devastated. She was missing. And she finally realized that me doing this isn't the best idea and I should actually go back to my family because they'll be worried about where I am. And that's when he kidnaps her because he realizes that if she leaves, he's going to get in huge trouble with the police. After like a hundred days of living there and seeing his uglier sides, she finally started to realize the relationship was weird and also that he was being very selfish and maybe that she wouldn't have minded if he ended up in jail like I do think it was starting to click in and after all this time being a couple her logical brain finally went wait I'm not safe and something weird is going on because at some point you do kind of have to wake up she lied and basically said he'd had her kidnapped from the beginning and I think the reason she did that was because she was worried about not being believed or being slut shamed or victim blamed and them saying well it was consensual for the first 100 days so it wasn't kidnapped then later I will say though because so much of the attention of the show is about she said she said Jeanette versus Kate who do we believe whose side are we on some of the attention really greatly went away from the actual grooming that was taking place and it just became women being pitted against each other which I do think is a shame because for me the most important and most compelling part of the show is this abuse of power that was happening between Kate and what's his name the teacher guy but everyone was sort of forgetting about that there are a few comments I got from you guys about the portrayal of grooming and whether it was done well or not that I just want to read for a second because I thought it was really interesting one of you said I feel like this may be an unpopular opinion but I wish that Kate and Martin hadn't been in a full-on relationship it would have made more sense if his obsession got the best of him and he ended up kidnapping her but the fact she went there on her own and stayed there living happily for months before she changed her mind kind of made it less scary and almost glorified it for me they were so domesticated like a happy married couple making plans for vacation and it was just not the way I wanted the show to portray their relationship it seemed too much like oh her life really sucks so let's put her with this guy who treats her right and listens to her but then eventually she doesn't like it it should have been much more of him reeling her in and forcing this and not shown as her seeking him out I don't know none of it was her fault he was manipulating her from the start but it took away the fear factor because she was happy with him for a while a lot of the show it's Kate wanting to kiss him and it's her physically touching him and it's her coming to his house and it could I think send the message maybe to viewers who are more impressionable that she asked for it she reached out first but another comment was different and they said the way they depicted grooming was great they showed how dangerous being with someone much older than you can be and Mr. Harris unlike Ezra was shown as this creepy guy who crushed on Kate and manipulated her into thinking he's the only one who cared about her which is true. Let Me In said, I liked how they broke down grooming because people have this idea of the groomer having flying red flags from the beginning. But honestly, when you're that young and in that position, they come to you as your only way of relieving your stress and pain. They come as a guardian angel who can give you a split second of peace when the rest of your life is unbearable. I'm glad they showed people what grooming can look like from the victim's perspective. The next character I want to touch on is Jamie. He is one of the more annoying, slightly confusing actually, and unlikable characters on the show, simply because he doesn't seem to know what he wants and he's flip-flopping all over the place and he's done a lot of bad things. After Kate comes back, she said Jeanette saw her in the basement. So he goes and punches Jeanette in the face without even talking to her about it first. And I understand being furious at Jeanette, but considering he hadn't even talked to Jeanette, I just thought it was a really extreme thing to go and punch her in the face, especially because she couldn't defend herself and you can kill someone or get them seriously hurt from punching them. And even the fact that he was on speaking terms with Jeanette afterwards at all rubbed me the wrong way because why are we punching people in the face? Like he's got a lot of anger issues. He also isn't a loyal person as he seems to totally forget about Kate when she goes missing and is kidnapped and he starts dating Jeanette, who's basically trying to be a carbon copy of Kate. But then when Kate 
Kate comes back, he ditches Jeanette because he feels like he should be there for Kate. But then when he's with Kate, he goes and kisses Jeanette and like he just couldn't figure out what he wanted. And I thought it would be clear on point which girl he liked, but I honestly wasn't sure which girl he liked. I think he liked Kate more because Jeanette was more of like a second choice or a backup for him, but I honestly couldn't tell. He kissed, um, who was it, Jeanette, never told Kate. And she was plucking up the courage to say that she'd seen the kiss for like a few weeks. Eventually she finally got the courage to talk to him about it. And one of the first things he says is, oh, so you were just hiding it away. Why don't you talk to me about it straight away? Acting as if it's her fault, red flag number one. And then Kate's upset and she's like, look, why did you kiss Jeanette? Like, I just want to talk about this and know the truth. And like, why would you do that? And he is lying so much. He's gaslighting her. He's saying, what are you talking about? I never did that. You know, you've been through a really traumatic experience, Kate. Sometimes your memories can be messed up, but I never did it. And I thought it was so messed up that after Kate tells him multiple times, no, I saw the kiss happen with my own eyes, Jamie, that he's still denying it and thinking he can brainwash her. Now let's talk about Mallory, one of Jeanette's friends, who's kind of a nerdy girl in the beginning and later she befriends Kate. I never felt like I could trust Mallory. I always find her really annoying in every scene she's in. Not as much as Jeanette by any means, but I do find Mallory very irritating. I didn't like how she was peer pressuring her friends in the beginning when they were younger to do things they weren't comfortable with. Later on she befriends Kate and the relationship is a lot more healthy, but I didn't like that she never mentioned to Kate that she was the one who'd seen Kate in the house because that's a huge secret to have between you and you're always going to be wondering what happened to Kate and why she wasn't in the basement and you'd have all these questions and the fact that she never told Kate that was really wrong because also it meant that Jeanette got thrown under the bus for being the girl that Kate saw which I think is really awful. The one thing I did like about Mallory was that she saw how creepy Jeanette was and would really call her out on it and say why are you so obsessed with Kate? You're weird and then Jeanette would try and defend herself and say I'm not creepy but she clearly clearly was so disturbed and Mallory was starting to pick up on it and I do believe that's one of the reasons why they drifted apart as friends because Jeanette could see through it. Mallory kissing Kate at the end was super weird. Um, I felt like it was queer baiting unless it actually becomes a fully fledged relationship. In that case I'll completely take it back but I didn't really like the kiss. I didn't think it was what Kate needed to be kissing anyone or be in any kind of relationship. I hope it's not queer baiting basically. Um, as for Vince he's another one of the best friends of Jeanette and he's one of the sweetest characters on the show but I wish he had more involvement in the main plot or maybe in the finale. He plays this big role because he's so sweet and caring and adorable, but yet a lot of his storylines were more his side plot of being gay and coming out. And that was kind of it. I felt like he could have done more basically because he could be really important. Now, finally, I just want to talk about the ending, which reveals that Kate did lie but Jeanette is still a perpetrator basically. So I honestly wasn't the biggest fan of this ending. I mean, the show could honestly, I think have been a five star show if the ending was like mind blowing with loads of twists and turns. I would rather the writers actually took a risk and they had all these people who were involved in Kate's kidnapping maybe. One, maybe one of the parents was involved in covering something up. Maybe someone did something to someone else that was really unexpected and things didn't play out the way you thought they would and it was really intense and messy and all of the storylines were suddenly intertwined and you know like a big bang it ends up being very simplistic overly simplistic if you were disliking Jeanette the whole way through because the endings basically yeah yeah Jeanette's still bad so you were right and that's kind of it. It was like all this build up throughout the show but not really a good payoff. At least with Pretty Little Liars. I know that show never answered the questions that it set up but it was really good at setting up mysteries and questions and all these different little things you had to solve and Cruel Summer wasn't the best at that. It's like their only real question was who's this Annabella person or whatever which turned out to actually be a gun pretty simple. Did Kate and Jeanette lock eyes or not? Those are very basic questions and by the end I wasn't really caring about what the answer was and I felt like there could have been more little mysteries and stakes set up but when the questions just answered at the end like yes Jeanette did see Kate. It's like, oh, great. It was just disappointing. It played out exactly how I thought it would, which is what made it disappointing because Jeanette heard Kate screaming for help. She went to open the door, but then she stopped and she thought about it. She wanted to have full control over Kate in that moment and be the more powerful one. And she also realized that maybe her life would suck again if Kate came back. So she hoped Kate would stay kidnapped and that she'd be killed. Why is that surprising? That's exactly what I thought would happen. And as a result, I felt let down. I felt like we had so many 
really compelling storyline set up and I was sure it would lead to something really big and the ending would have all these twists and turns but instead it was actually really basic. It was like they hadn't put really much thought into making it very twisted, very intense, unexpected. It was too surface level, I think. It was like they weren't in their first draft of writing it and they weren't adding any more layers to it. I really thought there'd be one more final plot twist around Mr. Harris or one more twist around Jamie being involved the whole time or maybe that I don't even know, just something more. That's why the show can only really get like a four out of five stars for me, simply because it didn't go out as dramatically as I thought it would. And it made me feel like all the episodes and the build up were kind of leading up to something that ultimately isn't that like fulfilling. And what I'm really hoping, because I know they've been renewed for a second season, what I'm really hoping is that this is for a reason and there's a whole lot more stuff we don't know and they're gonna address that in the second season. But even the plot twist with Mallory, I didn't think was that juicy. Mallory was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize you were Kate. I just saw you through the window. Didn't even register it was you. I just saw a woman making a phone call and obviously a kidnap victim wouldn't be making a phone call. Easy explanation. And Kate was like, oh, okay. So you didn't know it was me or you would have called the police. And Mallory's like, yeah, like I didn't know it was you. And then it was like, oh, great. Like it just wasn't that juicy. Please let me know if you feel the same way. But yeah, that was my review of Cruel Summer. I did enjoy watching it. I did think it was good. Although I'm not sure I'd rewatch it simply because of it not quite playing out the way I wanted it to. But I think you would have really enjoyed it if you had no idea Jeanette was mean. Then I think you would love it because you'd be shocked by the end. But if you were onto her from day one like I was, then it's kind of hard to be shocked by it or feel hurt or betrayed. Let's have a chat about it in the comments. Make sure you follow me on Instagram so you can vote and get involved in stuff in the future for my future video topics and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, you have to hit the notification bell and then also you get all notifications. It's very important. But I will see you guys for my next video.